We're back with Sarah Beckman, who is teaching us all how to truly love our neighbor and come alongside those who might be going through their own personal crisis. Sarah, you've written a great new book called Alongside, a practical guide for loving your neighbor in their time of trial. Let's get into some of those practical tips in your book. It's not about you. <laughs> We affectionately have a phrase in our house that when someone does something that's sort of selfish, if you will, or yeah. maybe just not about others, we always say chapter two. Mm. <laughs> so yes, it's not about you. I think the hardest thing is that we genuinely want to love people and care for them mm -hmm. and walk into those hard places. But if we're not careful, we can make it about us and our need to serve or our need to be seen serving or our need to actually be with the person or spend time with them. Or our need to be thanked. Or our need to be thanked, <laughs> yes. And yeah. we shouldn't expect gratitude, and we shouldn't expect you know our two-hour visits, and we shouldn't expect a long conversation at the front door if we're bringing a meal, and we shouldn't expect prompt responses from someone who is in the middle of a life-changing crisis, who doesn't have time to think straight, much less <laughs> think about responding or getting back to you. So we can get our feelings hurt if we're not careful. Um, we just have to remember it's about the person in trial, not about us, and so your feelings come second. Yeah, check our motivations. Also, show grace to the person who you're journeying with. Um, sickness can make people emotional. Right. Yes, I mean, it's so difficult because ultimately your life has changed for whatever you're going through and you aren't able to take care of me and my emotions. So I just need to give you grace as your friend and know that it's really difficult what you're going through. Um, I have to keep my emotions at bay mm. because if I show up at your house or in your space and over emote on you, that's a burden that then I've put right back on you. Now, it's different if I'm your sister and yeah. we're gonna cry together, but um, we talk about sort of what level of relationship you have to someone and it's not appropriate to give all your emotion and your hardship to the person in trial if you're not, you know, mom, sister, tight, yeah. close friend. Let's talk about that tier system because I think it's genius. When, <laughs> you know, when you think about how do I reach out to somebody who's going through a certain trial, maybe going through this tier, explain it. You have a tier system that you've created. Yeah, so it's interesting. It almost didn't end up in the book because I, I was so, I wanted to be so perfect about how I put it in every single place, but I'm so glad I did. Everyone yeah. just keeps saying that the relationship levels are th this way of discerning what's your relationship with someone. So it's tears, um, not crying, but mm -hmm. <laughs> levels. Yes, T-I-E-R. T-I-E-R. <laughs> and one being you're very close to someone and four being maybe you're just a friend of a friend, acquaintance, you don't know them, and in between the two and three. And basically it's about how do I determine what's appropriate to help you based on how close I am to you. And the thing that I have heard and, and that I've realized myself is it gives us so much much freedom mm -hmm. because what I realize is if I am really close to you I have a specific way I can help but I don't have to help everyone yeah and if right now if you think of your life you probably can think of 5 10 12 people that are struggling yeah. and so if you recognize they're not all mine to help because they're not maybe a one or a two if they're a tier three or four I could maybe give one expression mm -hmm. of care and then I can move on. I can have that be my part. So it's actually a way to give freedom so that you know who's yours to help and who's not. Yeah. One thing that was a little convicting in your book is when you talked about how sometimes, you know, if you're helping somebody in need, how you'll say, you know, let me know if you need anything. And we kind of leave the onus on them instead of what you said, being specific and saying, this is what I can do to help. Is that okay? And I've done that so many times. Let me know if you need anything. And and I have also heard people say that to me and thought, well, I, again, I have a hard time asking for help. So right. I probably wouldn't call you to help, to ask, you know, to get help. So just explain that and the importance of giving specific things that you can do. Yeah, so instead of saying, let me know what I can do, which puts all the burden on yeah. you, Maggie, if you're in need, then you're having to come up with what I'm gonna do, which yeah. <laughs> that's Your not helpful. Title, yeah. Right, you just have more work. And I had people time after time tell me that it was such a burden when people would just repeatedly say, let me know, let me know, let mm -hmm. me know, let me know. And you don't realize it because it really is born out of a place of empathy mm -hmm. and concern and care. And so what you need to do instead is make a very specific offer. Mm. I would love to help you by driving you every week 
to, to you your know, your to, yes, or I would love to pick up your children, or I would love to bring you dinner, and then get even more specific next week on Tuesday in this food or that yeah, food. Yeah. You know, as specific as you can make it, because then you're actually more willing to do it, yeah. or more you know, more likely to do it, yeah. and they're more likely to receive it because you've removed all the barriers. They don't have so much to decide, and it doesn't feel so. Oh yeah, I have to say what I need. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sarah. Our time's up. The book is called Alongside a Practical Guide for Loving Your Neighbor in Their Time of Trial. And I want to encourage you that are watching that might be going through a time of trial and you really want someone to come alongside you. Well, I know some great people who are available 24-7 that would love to come alongside you and to pray with you. And uh, the number's at the bottom of your screen, 1-866-273-4444. Amazing prayer partners that are always there to come alongside you in prayer. Stay with us. We'll be right back.